G'day, Michael here. My latest purchase of a 3D printer is this little guy, the Cocoon Create. Now, it was actually sold by a supermarket chain here, Aldi, which is an, uh, a uh, German supermarket chain. Um, but it's, to my surprise, the bed looked really good and, and um, I expected a little bit more out of it than actually it was. The, the bed was not heated. So I contacted Cocoon online and they advised me that I couldn't add a bed heater to it. I had to buy an aftermarket uh, silicon one. Uh, and so what I did was, underneath here which you cannot see, I put a 100mm square 50 watt silicon bed heater. I'm finding 50 watts isn't quite enough, it struggles to get uh, 70 degrees. I'm printing PETG here using the bed at 60 degrees. This is the controller. I've just jammed it up so there's wires and cables and crap everywhere. Uh, you've got the 12 volt power supply which is a typical power supply you see on uh, 3D printers, just generic. Um, the controller is not very smart. It can only use the sensor that came with it. Um, the silicon uh, heater bed came with like a, th a thermistor on it. I suspect it's thermistor and I suspect that the, I haven't read up, uh, I suspect that the sensor that came with the controller is a thermocoupler. So I did actually try wiring the, this is the wiring from the uh, silicon bed, uh, but it gave crazy numbers. Instead of showing in the order of 20 degrees centigrade, it showed minus 30 something or other. So, um, I ended up abandoning that and just used the sensor that came with the controller. The controllers are pretty straightforward. The documentation's on the back there. Uh, basically, it's using a 12 volt um, uh, controls, um, well, the control system is using 12 volts to run by. But at the end of the day, the actual heating is done, it just basically connects one through to the other. So whatever voltage goes in, it goes back out again. So you have one line connected directly from the power supply to your heater, and then another one going via this relay. Okay, um, now the unit was originally designed to just print PLA, and I've still got these sample rolls of PLA, but even that was a little bit tricky to get to it here. You had to, it was quite fussy to get the thing to print properly. It's got about a 120 millimeter cubic print volume, but what is really impressive about this little machine is it's it's quite you know, quite sturdy steel. It's folded and welded, and there doesn't appear to be any ringing in it. Um, precision of everything seems to be quite good. You can see how I'm printing. It's actually my second print of PETG, and the print finish is actually quite good. I'm very happy with it. Hopefully, I'm not shaking too much for you. Um, basically. I'm seeing this as a, well it can print about half the different products that I have on eBay still, and it, uh, you know, for size, and it is quite a precise unit. I'm hoping that I can um, get this thing, maybe even set up to print nylon. At the moment I certainly couldn't because I can't get enough heat in the bed. But in any case, I guess this video is about how to go about putting a, a, a bed heater on one of these little machines. If you happen to pick one of these up, it's not a dead end. You can make them far, you know, far more useful by uh, by heating the bed and being able to very simply add these couple of components to make it uh, capable of heating the bed. You end up um, with a much more useful printer. The I can't really say well enough how well how firmly and how accurately everything moves. I'm quite impressed. The print cooling probably could be improved a little bit, but um, it does bridging reasonably well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to it that's, that's sort of outstanding, except that it is very solid and very free of, you know, ringing or anything like that. I haven't had any funny chatter on it. Uh, it's not a high performing printer. It's a 0.4 millimeter tip, but it is quite sort of solid. I can see this being a real workhorse in the in the uh, printing environment here for producing quite clean prints. Now this is PETG, 
you get a little bit of stringing, but the stringing is, you know, breaks off very easily. It's not much, not much to worry about. In any case, I'm pretty happy with this print finish. I don't know how well that's showing up. But it's printing quite well. And in any case, the, the typical problems you have with the open framed printers, like, I don't know, the CR10, the Black Widow, whatever, uh, where there's potential for ringing, it's just not here on this little unit. Um, it is a small unit, it is a low performance unit, but it is a very stable unit. Now, I'm using the Raspberry Pi rig with the Octoprint on it, so the Octopi to control it all, and everything seems to work quite beautifully. Um, it's very simple to focus, it's very simple to thread the filament. It came with a bit of a, a spool holder on the side. Focus, there we go. Uh, it came with a bit of a, a spool holder on the side, and uh, it's all just very straightforward and easy to drive, with the exception of not having a bed heater. So, adding the bed heater makes this thing quite a good unit. I think uh, I'd certainly have change out of $200 for the, the power supply, the controller, and the bed heater. They really aren't much in it. I think if you scratch it around, you might be able to get it for under $100 all the bits and bobs. I might put some links up later um, in the description just to show the type of unit to use. There are lots on the market but basically a, a suitable size silicon uh, bed heater is fine. There's quite a few of these different temperature controllers but in essence they, they behave much the same. Add a generic power supply. I, I oriented everything around uh, uh, 12 volts you could choose 24 volts if you had a bigger area, but basically there's, there's not much to it. The wiring is very simple, um, and your own controller will have its own wiring. Um, so I guess that's about it. There's not much to it. In any case, feel free to experiment and modify your printer to suit yourself, um, and I think you'd be glad you did. Well, I guess that's it. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.